my goodness. What on earth are they really trying to say? Oh, I see. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you had joined me. How you doing? I'm having a tough time with this book, also known as your favorite book. I'm trying to crack through it, having a tough time. Let's see if I can find a solution to that. There might be something that can help me somewhere, right? I'm gonna find out. Aha. Uh -huh. Now let's move on to our next section in the PEMBOK guide. 2.4 is called organizational systems. The whole topic of organizational systems hinges on systems theories. Now, Systems theory exists in a much wider domain outside of project management. But just to get you started on organizational systems, you need to know a little bit about systems theory. What do we mean by a system? A system consists of a series of functions or activities. You could think about these as sub-processes. So within a system... Do you know where I am? I am listening to chapter two on our learning management system. But some of our students said, Phil, what would be even better than going through this on our own will be for you to help us go through not just chapter one, not just chapter two, but they've placed some cruel and unusual demands on me for me to do this all over again. That's right, live. Some of my students from the class that I just finished a few hours ago said, Phil, we would like to attend another tech camp where you focus on chapters one, two, and three. As a result of their request, I've listened. And I have a phenomenal six hour boot camp where we are going into the depths of chapters one, two, and three. Why? Because the language in chapters one, two, and three is part of that common lexicon that the exam is based on. Think about it. A lot of people are struggling with chapters one, two, and three. And as a result, that tapers into chapter four all the way to 13, and they don't even know where they are. It just occurred to me that this could be one of the biggest missing links for a lot of people. It makes sense why a lot of people are shaky. It's because they do not have a firm PEMBOK guide foundation in chapters one, two, and three. Moreover, did it ever occur to you that chapters nine, 10, and 13 rest very heavily on chapter three? That's right, my favorite chapter in the PEMBOK guide is chapter three, because this is where leadership is broken apart. Everything rises and falls on leadership. The project manager's ability to lead the team is what propels the team towards success. It's the leadership of the PM. It's not the tools, it's not the Primaveras, the Microsoft projects of the world, the plan views, the clear views, the smart sheets, the SAPs. No, 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 no. It's not all that. It's what is deep in chapter three. For that reason, it gives me great pleasure to let you know I am going to be training chapters one, two, and three next week on Saturday. You don't want to miss it. Six hours. We are going to unravel those tiny little intricacies 
that people often miss. I gave my students a quiz on chapters one, just chapter one. They weren't very happy at the end of it. You know why? They realized there was a lot that they did not know from chapter one. So if you don't know the foundation, don't know the basics, how are you going to have anything to build on? You're going to be building on quicksand. You see where I'm going with this? So chapter one has a lot of what I call the Pembokai dogma. The doctrine and the mindset and little words here and there that are key in you acing the future chapters. It will amaze you. Let me show you a few things because maybe it's not that clear for you yet. A few days ago, I gave you guys a video on situational questions. Did you notice where a lot of the answers were hiding? Page 20, 21. I asked folks, what are names you would give phases? Everyone, pretty much everyone except one person, bombed that question. When you take a look at chapter 1, this is where page 25 is. The mechanics of page 25. We'll talk about that as well. When you go to chapter 2, this is where you need to really change your thinking about projects and programs and the firm. Chapter 2. So as my students began telling me, Phil, we would really like to have another class of chapters 1, 2, and 3. You know, this is where we have the PMO and the different structures. It made absolute sense why they were asking for that. And then when I hit chapter 3, I looked at my PMBOK guide. I looked at them. I looked at my PMBOK guide. I looked at them. Hmm. It made sense. Why so many of them were asking for this. The essence of what they do as project managers lives in chapter 3. So if you haven't had a good scrub of chapter 3, you ain't started. Do you know why most project managers who succeed, really succeed? Do you know why they really succeed? It is as a result of something talked about here on page 53. Now you go read page 53 and tell me if you find that special ingredient that makes project managers succeed. It's not scheduling, it's not costing, it's not scoping, it's not risking, it's not procurement. No, no, no. It's none of those chapters. It's the unspoken magic ingredient that project managers who succeed have. I'm going to read it for you. Research shows that successful project managers consistently and effectively use certain essential skills. What are those skills? Is it the ability to just speak? Nope. Is it the ability to just communicate? No. Research reveals that the top two, two percent, two, we're not talking about half of the top, no, no, no. The top two percent, my goodness. Don't you want to be part of that top two percent? This is in chapter three. This magic ingredient wasn't told you in chapters 4 to 13. You see how powerful chapter 3 is? The top 2% of project managers, as designated by themselves, no, as designated by their bosses and peers. It says, as designated by their bosses and team members, distinguish themselves by demonstrating, watch this, watch this, watch this. It is so important. I highlighted it in pink in my PMBOK guide. 
I got really excited. I'm like, yeah, there's someone who knows what it's all about. By demonstrating superior relationship and communication skills in order to get inroads with folks. It's not just about communicating. John Maxwell has a book, a curriculum which I train called Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. Everyone can communicate. But connecting is about the relationship skills, the relationship part. And chapter three is full of it. Do you see why chapter three is my favorite chapter? It underscores the importance of leadership. It underscores that the true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. How do you get influential? It's all there in chapter three. You've got to unravel it. Demonstrating superior relationship and communication skills, watch this, while displaying a positive mental attitude. That is what will put you in the top 2%. But wait, there's more. There's a whole lot more in chapters 1, 2, and 3. For that reason, I want to invite you to go to the link below. If you mean business, unravel in chapter one, two, and three, and really get him into the meat of what will make you succeed, not just on the exam, but really having a strong, firm base as a PM. You need to join me. There's a lot to be talked about in chapter three. Power types. Influencing skills, politics, it's so important. I understand why my students want this, and I want you to come along for the ride. So why don't you go to the link below where it's all happening. Sign up, and I look forward to seeing you in the class to really get chapters 1, 2, and 3 down pat. And then when you build integration and scope and schedule and cost, it will be rock solid. Okay? Someone said, Phil, I've never heard anyone really train chapter one, two, and three well. We're going to do it. You want to be there. Okay? Thank you for joining me. It's your friend Phil, keeping it real for you. Tell you what you need to do to ace the test and succeed. I look forward to seeing you there. Bye for now.